Don't even play with me. Get the whole... <laughs> oh, oh my god, I got a KO from the top. Oh, what a hit! Hello, everybody, and welcome to PLE time here on WWE 2K24, my GM mode. We are on week 15. We are at the fast lane PLE. We have been fighting towards this, and we have got so many great rivalries that we can blow off during this uh, show. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. So, but once again, everybody, for those that are watching on YouTube, we do record these live Wednesdays and Saturdays after AEW Collision and Dynamite uh, on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. For those here watching on Twitch, we do release these every Tuesday and Friday over on our Backbreaker Gaming YouTube channel. Uh, uh, YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker underscore gaming because the guy with four subscribers has the Backbreaker Gaming one. No! All right, enough of that. Well, yeah, uh, getting into the show. Last week, we had a very successful show. We got a lot of rivalries started. We got a few rivalries set up to a level four. We got Gunter absolutely pissed at a free signee that we got in Trent Shaw. We got him absolutely pissed with him right now. So I think we got it set up that, you know, Trent and Gunter might end up with a four star rivalry here. But yeah, let's get into this booking because I'm really looking forward to this one more than usual. All right, so uh, Ava's got to take that off, so we're not going to do that feud. Schedule running on your most popular available star this week. With zero scouting points, I'm not doing a run it on Gunter, especially in a. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Uh. All right, so I've already pre... We were here last time. We already spent the 50 grand to get the PLE for Fastlane. So we get the extra boost in everything that we do here. So 25,000, five tickets, show quality up 19%. We don't have enough assets to upgrade anything else right now, but we do have someone who can upgrade. Clint! One of our rookies has got up to level five here, so he gets a perk. Tornado Tag Specialty or TLC... I'm going to give Tornado Tag because... Oh, right. We have to get them in a tag title match. We're doing a tag title match on the show. What a quinky dink. Oh, all right. Oh, and one other thing I'll show you here. We're not going to be able to use it here, but Clint's... Because of the power card I used, he got a 5 out of 5 promo skill here, so. Uh, yeah, so. There's that. <laughs> Alright, so. Let's book this show. Like, I already know the bookheads of the show. Like, our main event tonight is going to be a tag team steel cage match between our champions and our challengers. It's already set up, ready to go. Scarlet's up to 49 health, so we definitely are, she's definitely okay to go. We got a level four rivalry here. We're gonna finish off. And also, well, I guess Fallon and Ivy are the ones that have the feud. So we're gonna put the titles on the line here. Basically, just load this match to the gills. We're good there. All right, this one here is gonna be a one-on-one. -on -one. Our other four-star rivalry. Just because we're going to get the extra boost here as we go along, right? So that's going to be our opener. So we're going to get an extra boost on that. Our middle match, we're going to put a tag team title match in here. This, like I said, these are extremely easy to book. 
just because I think once again we're gonna go with Dom and uh Dom and Corbin are gonna be taking on uh, the champs Stacks and McDougal gonna put a title on there so we still got some money left so we're still doing okay here Let's see if we can push some other rivalries here going. Oh, it's Cora and Ivy's the feud. Okay, so we'll do this one again. Branded PLE bonus. And I'll put this one here because if I put it here, it's going to get... Ugh. Hopefully that belt moves off stacks. Yeah, I really do hope that uh, Dom and Baron get it because I try. I'm trying everything with Baron, trying to get him to work. Let's see who I got left here. All right, Brittany's dead tonight, so I want to get her involved. I don't have any female heels. I have one female heel left, so I need to pick up another one. No, I'm losing Brit, so it's not a big deal here in that case. But her stamina is only 24, so I have to give her some time off here or we're going to be in some big trouble here. Let's, uh, let's hold off. Let's see who else we got available. Ugh. We have a lot of faces who don't have a lot of heels. Gunter and Trent, we could do, but I don't wanna I don't wanna upstage the other match. Who do we have available here is uh We could get Becky on the card here. Let Becky's a face specialist, so she can face anybody here. Get an established star. Female. Heel. Let's see if we can book somebody. I just want somebody for one night. Just a one night special. All right, chat. We got... Oh, shit. We got a couple choices here. All right, we're going to do a couple things here. One, Pretty Ruthless has had a lot of work done with her. And she's cheap. So I'm going to sign her. All right, chat, I'm going to give you guys the ability to book this one. It's going to be a non-title match because I don't want to screw things up. Which one of the three here... Sonya Deville, Dakota Kai, or Zai Lee. Don't worry about the cost. I'm only booking them for one week. Who do you want to see face Becky tonight? Give me the option of any of the three. I know Dakota's a lot of fun there. Sonya, we don't get a lot, get to see a lot. You want to see Dakota? All right. Because I could book her for tonight for 12 grand. So now. Actually, I'll do this just to use it up, use it up some more here. Put Becky in there. We'll put Brittany in there in her last night. We will bring in Pretty Ruthless. And we will bring in Zyli or Dakota Kai. Does that work out? No, because that's the only feud there. Three fighters. No, we're not doing that. We're going to do exactly what I said we were going to do. We're going to do that.
We do that as a last man standing match. I think that'll work out pretty well. Now we gotta get these promos booked. Oh, we got lots left here. Okay. Because I want to sh show you saying your chat, this is gonna make sense here. Promos go through a grudge match against Trent Shaw within three weeks. Well, if he wants that match, he's gonna have to sell it for me. Extreme rules match with Brittany in there. You know what? You're a hell of a man. It's not going to really help for too much, but you know what? I'm here for my fans. Meant the other one, which, uh, oh, the add Britney to the Ivy and oh, that actually makes sense. Zodiac, you're a hell of a smart man. And we'll give Britney one last hurrah here, so. That works out. So we get a branded bonus there. You know what? I'll just do this. Because if it's going to get a branded bonus, I want that fourth. That fourth match has to hide compared to the other ones here. So. All right. Let's see. What we get book here. Who's left? We got five people left for four promos. So we're going to do a call out promo. You want him so bad, you better talk him in the building. We're going to do some... Who needs to put themselves over here? I don't need to work on his popularity. I don't need it. Trent? Yeah, let's see if we could get him over a little bit here. I don't know how well that's going to work, but that's okay. Charity. You're going to be fine if you lose anything here, and then we'll do the advertising promo. Do the advertising promo with Carmelo. All right, so the order I want to do these in here. I'll do it like that. Actually, I'll do it like this. That way, Gunther has the time to come out and deal with it here. All right, what do you think, chat? What do you think? We got opener of... MVP and Dragunov in a cage to settle that rivalry. Then from there, we go to a last man standing match between Becky and Dakota. Then we got an Extreme Rules match between Cora Jade, Ivy Nile, and Battleship Brittany. Then we have our tag titles on the line with Dirty Dom and Baron Corbin taking on Stax and Clint. And then our main event is another cage match between JC Jade and Scarlett versus Fallon Henley and Billy Slugger. I think we got it. Well, let's take out the power cards here. Oh, uh, the Wambulance. We're not going to get there yet. And I don't know if I, I don't want to, I don't have enough money for that anyway. Because if I buy that card, I don't have enough for his shell. And I got a fixed match already, so I don't have to worry about that. Injury rehab, I got one, one, and two threes. Or one, two, two, threes. So I don't need any of those. Ugh. What do you think, chat? We use this now or save it for 
because the thing is, if I use that card now, this match could oversee this one. And I'd like to keep it. I, I think we're going to leave that one out. Leave that card. We'll save it for later. Because I know we're going to need a few spots. So we're going to pop things in here. So. But I think with that being said, I think we're good. I think we're set. <sighs> Please don't screw this up on me. All right, here we go. So first we have to check out everybody else's cards first here because it's a back and forth rule here. So. so an opener in a backstage brawl, we got Logan Paul versus Josh Briggs with Kurt Angle coming in to beat up Logan Paul's ass. This one deserves a full 13 second clip. Ugh, annoy me. Tyler Bate calling out uh, Angel, which got the rivalry going. Blair Davenport, Indy Hartwell. I'm with you, McG. Uh, <laughs> Alright, Blair and Indy, let's see how this goes. Blair wins. Two and a half star match. Okay, so that's... Vicky McLeod, this is already a level four rivalry, so this is just a waste of time. The Miz versus Julius Creed, another rivalry match, but the title's not on the line. Somebody chickened out. Four stars. Miz wins, but can't get the title. Horrible. Rousey putting herself... Oh, Jesus criminy. Neon Brightstar versus Piper Niven. So, in ECW, the women's matches all get a boost because they don't have a title. One, two, that's three. Ring the bell. Piper Niven. Two-star match. Ugh. But they got a rivalry out of it. <laughs> sort of the way I'm at right now. Isla Dawn puts herself over. Good. All right. She might be what I might be targeting here going forward. And our main event, a steel cage match between Valhalla and Larray, finishing the rivalry, which means this will be a five-star freaking match. One, two, that's three. Ring the bell. Four and a half, and Valhalla's up for two weeks. Which I think makes sense. If you're ending a rivalry, if somebody's got to be out for a while, it makes sort of sense. All right, WCW, Andre Chase versus Finn Balor. Once again, title not on the line. I think he's a tag champ, though, so. Three star. This could be good. China putting herself over. Up three. Out of girl. Tag team match. Two jobbers versus Omos and Drew. Omos and Drew in a two. Ugh. They got a tag team rivalry. <laughs> Book T called out carrying cross. Man, that's a lot of black tights there. Paragon J Pierce versus Captain Grog at a ugh. One, two, that's it. Ring the bell. Pierce wins in a three-star match, so if that rivalry grows. Should put that second just for the hell of it. What the hell is that? Both guys telling each other off. You're supposed to do that before the PLE, not at the PLE. And for a tag team match, the other half of the tag champs, Elton Prince, teaming up with Tim Burr versus Big E and Randy Orton. One, two, it's over. Ring it. Big E out for a month in a two-star match. Let's just say I might be the only one who doesn't get the injury bug so far. Makes me sort of scared what's going to happen tonight. All right, so the champ champ. 
the two top one member of the two top blondes, uh, Tiffany Stratton, whose partner Alexa Bliss is out for a month with an injury. Uh, take it out, Gigi Dolan here. No title on the line again. Gigi wins, but is out for another month. She's losing to everybody. So, in other words, watch who you're, watch who you're picking up in WCW because they're not going to have many people left. Okay, opener for the women's title. Molly Holly defending against Meechin. This has been going for a while. In a tag team sense. Four stars, new rivalry. So now the singles feud out of the tag feud. Sort of the opposite of what we've been looking for Corner of Jade, right? Tommaso Ciampa, get an extra point there. Kit Wilson versus Undertaker. This would be hilarious to watch in real life. Undertaker in a, yeah, I'd be surprised if it did that much. It's probably a 30 second match. Nakamura bringing in 4,500 people. Stop dust. Oh, by the way, I uh, got the nightmare package. Uh, I didn't realize that I didn't download the nightmare package for uh, 2K when I ordered it because I ordered the uh, deluxe edition for the Rhea Bianca cover. So I didn't realize I had all these extra characters available. All right, let's see how this goes. One, two, that's three. Bring it. Otis beat Stardust in a two-star match, but a robbery's formed. <sighs> Why are you guys calling out pro calling out level four is had a PLE? All right, Baszler and Natalia take it on ugh, Sammy Vortex and Car what a team there. Sammy Vortex and Carmella. You want to talk about a dichotomy there? One, two, bring it. Shane and Natalia at a two and a half star match. And they were trying to get that. They already got it to a level four. Why do you have to do two promos like that? Just to be sure. Main event, triple threat match. Our truth broad breaker, Jim, the Anvil night hot. Come on, Nightheart. Our truth is your new US champion on Raw as it goes to a level three. Awesome. All right. Time to show them how it's done here. Now, for SmackDown, we are opening up with a steel cage match between bitter rivals, MVP and Ilya Dragunov. These two have basically had a few going for two months now. I just haven't been able to fit about a show to do the proper work there. So let's get to this. I love the fast blade branding and all that. So we're getting the extra bonus there. All right, here's a question for you, chat, and I know that you watching on YouTube, you already know the answer. Does MVP show up at All In tomorrow? I almost got a feeling he won't. Just because I think, uh, oh, sorry, I went. Big G, you're still thinking TNA? I, I don't blame you thinking that. Uh, Zodiac is saying, no, I think... I think MVP wants to keep his commitment with the fact that he said that he's going to be showing up at Bloodsport after his contract runs out. I think he wants to wait for his next match to be at that Bloodsport. Now, Lashley, on the other hand... I think that's the kind of pop you could get at Wembley in that gauntlet match. If you want a heavy hitter halfway through and just basically turn it into Tony Codd's, uh Yeah, I want to book you. I want to book you. I want to book you.
So Ricochet Lashley, I... I think Michael Oku is part of it as well. I think they do it the same way that they sort of did it in uh, in WWE, how they set up the Hurt Business. You have both guys in there, and they're doing some somewhat of a good job. Like, they're putting out great matches, but they're not winning. They're sort of doing what De Brian Danielson's been doing. Great matches, but just haven't been able to win. Then you could bring in an MVP eventually. And just simply say, look, when we worked together, you were winning, Lashley. Ricochet, you were our choice to come in here. But a senile old man decided that somebody else would have been a better for that spot. You bring in Shelty B for the third spot or the fourth spot there. MVP has insisted he wants to wrestle. Do you need a fifth person in that faction? Like, for example, uh, hey, S2S, hope you're doing well. Yeah, we do uh, Saturday nights. We're here for our weekly uh, AEW sidecast for AEW Collision. And then following that, we do some uh, WWE 2K24 My GM mode. So right now we have the uh, Fastlane PLE going on right now. Don't tell me we end it right now. I would laugh my ass off. Five star match, exit in 30 seconds. But I really want to get this match quality up here because I'm expecting Adam Pierce to throw a curveball at me. Depending where we go here on this, but Like realistically if I can make enough money up The show after the PLE is the one that you want to You want to set up as your sort of junk show I think is the best way to put it I will say watching you do this makes me want to get this game. Hey, I do believe it is on sale as well. And if you really want a real tug at the heart's heart, uh, a heartstrings moment, do yourself a favor, hop over to our YouTube channel. Yes, I'm always plugging it. The video that got released today, today is actually part of our series with Quest for Jewels and uh, his son, Level Up Leon. They have been doing sort of a remux of the entire WWE pay-per-view calendar. It's been off for a few months. Jules has needed some time to reorganize some stuff. But they're playing together, like they each take a character in the match. And they just completed SummerSlam 23. So they are looking to catch up, but it is really lots of fun watching them go back and back and forth. And I will say both of them are very good. Is MVP going to win this? Dragonov looks out. Sorry, I was just trying to get my hiccups out of there. But if MVP wins this, this might MVP might be the guy that I can work with uh, stacks to get that IC title off of him. See, S2S, I'm with you. I to honestly to play this game. I am complete garbage. So 
So the pinfalls take a little extra time on this one because the referee technically has to run around the ring to the position because they won't put him in the ring. But I can't play this game worth a lick. So what I've done, there's two things you could do. And I personally have decided to go with the GM mode. You can go with my GM and actually create, uh, basically work on a brand to compete against three other brands, right? I, if there was some kind of online thing going on, I would totally love to uh, do some online GM with some other people. Nice catch German there. The other thing you could do if you don't want to do that is uh, the universe mode. Where you can either create a character or download creative characters, create your own federation, literally book all the matches. And literally I could like, I could sit here and commentate every single match that goes on on the card here. And I am going to have to talk to you guys once we get closer to the release of 24. Or sorry, 25. Made a pretty good Lumberjack Larry. Uh-oh. Hold on here before... Get back to the sec here. MVP so close. Can Ilya catch him in time? Nope. Can you create an MVP wins it? There you go. Can you create your own character for my GM? You can, uh, you can have a custom GM. If you want to have custom characters, you could actually, uh, at the beginning, it asks you what roster you want to use. You can actually pick your roster of people that you want to have in your pool for who, uh, who gets to work this four stars. All right. Great start to the show. And if you create your own character and he's part of the pool, sort of works out, right? Tread shop. Hey, put himself up a little bit. He's talking about how he he is so good. He is he is the king of all kings here. He is the one who is going to take out Gunta. But speaking of taking things apart here, last man standing. Uh I want to get Becky on the card because, well, Becky's a great wrestler. This is a one night only. Yeah, he's the ultimate cruiserweight, exactly. Uh, for one night only, Dakota Kai joining our roster. We're going to see how things go. If she likes what we're doing, maybe we'll have to go back and see if we can bring her in a little later on here. But let's see how this goes. Dakota was with us during season one for a fair bit. I also bought Baldur's Gate 3 as I've been waiting to go on sale. I need to figure out how, how that game works too. I know very little about Dungeons and Dragons, but again, it's a gorgeous game. Seems to have quite a bit of depth and replay. Absolutely. And I'm in a similar boat right now. Like, I'm, uh, I bought Stellar Blade on release, so I... Oh, sorry, let me get... So yeah, I picked up Stellar Blade because that was supposed to be my successor and my in-between game with uh, Tears of the Kingdom and Echoes of Wisdom, both from Zelda. Unfortunately, I only think I'm going to have three weeks in between the games coming out. So Stellar Blade might actually be part of the rotation, but a different day. I don't know how long uh representing damage control from Auckland, New Zealand, Dakota Kai. I I don't know how long it's going to take to get through Echoes of Wisdom. But yeah, I want to get into Stellar Blade. I want to 
the Princess Peach game I want to get into as well. But uh, what I'm doing for September, because the next Thursday after this one is the beginning of the NFL season, we're going to have an open choice about what we're going to play for the Thursdays before going into... Uh, going into Echoes of Wisdom, are we going to play NFL Blitz? Are we going to play Mo um, Mute League Football? Or we're going to play NFL Street 2? Those are my three football games. And I think we're going to run with those for the three weeks in between. So what's the background on this match? Simply put, Becky... I wanted to get her on the card because, hell, she's a great wrestler. She hasn't wrestled enough. And after beating Cora Jade and not being able to get a, get a rivalry going with... Uh, I'm trying to remember who she had. I think it was Scarlet she couldn't get a rivalry with. She basically laid out an open challenge here to anybody who, uh, if they can beat her in a last person standing match, because she is the last woman standing right now, if anybody can beat her, they, she will give them a title shot. Trixie Gambit is waiting right now because she's pissed after last week. She wants the revenge on Gambit for what happened there. But in title matches... So basically, this is a filler match for Becky before she gets to face Trixie here. Because odds are, next week, we're going to have to do the Ava Moreno-Trixie match because Ava's probably not going to be here come next... Because uh, her asking price is got, probably going to be through the roof, I'm thinking. We also got to look at Billy Slugger and see what her contract's going to be like after this. Well, yeah, in terms of storyline here, this is basically... You know how Tony Khan likes to throw in his occasional surprise person to come out? Well, ours for tonight is Dakota Kai showing up. Inflation coming from my GMO too? Well, the thing is, if you build these guys up to a level 10 or a level 15, they are going to cost more, right? And then as well, you know, we're going to start making more money. Like, like I was mentioning earlier, if when I want to get my uh, stuff put together in terms of what I wanted to get for assets first, the arena is the most important one. Because if you don't have the arena, you're not going to get the revenue in. If you don't get the revenue in, you can't do the other stuff. Like, we're going to create great matches. Like, this card here might be the most solid card I've had since Mania. Like, if I really wanted to get cocky, I could have brought in somebody that was a little more legendary. Becky B. Vicious, Dakota Lo Dakota knows how to kick. Holy crap. Dakota's going to come in and beat her. Are we getting the John Cena route here? No. 
We get to John Cena post WrestleMania 28 view here. And this is why I like to watch these matches so I can get a little bit of an idea what what the feel is and what they're looking for. Like, I, I know the algorithm doesn't really look at it. If Dakota wins, I have to sign her. I have to be able to find her again. Here's the fun part, chat, and I don't know if this works or not. If Dakota wins, and if they want Dakota for a trade, technically your contract's up right after this match. I don't think it's going to matter. And there you go. Becky wins once again as Dakota gets up at 10 and a half. Here is your winner, Becky she did her job. She did exactly what she needed to do. And Becky's super happy about it. What the hell was that? She definitely did her job. Oh my, I can't wait to see the score on that one. Wow. I spent 25 grand on that too. All right, Hayes, you lost two popularity, but you gave us 10 grand. Uh, I appreciate you. All right, this one here, Battleship Brittany has said she's heading out the door. And uh, Cora J and Ivy Nile do have a bit of a rivalry going here. So we're going to see maybe if uh, we can get Ivy a victory over Brittany. That would be my ultimate goal here. Like last week, Ivy Nile comes out, or sorry, uh, Cora Jade comes out, and she's just pissed because she lost to Becky. She doesn't know what to do. She wants to beat up somebody. Ivy Nile comes out and says, I'll beat you. I'll face you. Let's get into an Extreme Rules match. I believe Cora ended up winning it. And... So Cora ends up winning the match. They still get a rivalry forming. But now with Battleship Brittany Hague out the door, I'm hoping to use her to help get the uh, get the little piece of uh, rivalry up here a little bit to a level two. This very well could be one of our main rivalries going into our fourth pay-per-view coming up in five weeks. And I'm just trying to think what the next... The, it isn't Rumble... I think they do TLC next for us. I found it completely stupid that one of the big five is not Royal Rumble. And her opponents, first representing the Creed Brothers from Knoxville, Tennessee, Ivy Nile. Now I've always wondered what, which way should I do? Like, Zodiac, do you mind this, or would you rather have created characters and have uh, a universe mode instead where we don't have the GM scores and all that? I personally enjoy this because there's a little bit of challenge involved. Some of the ratings are absolutely Meltzer-ish, but I digress. I like the GM scores, yeah, like... I like the fact that you have to think about it rather than just throwing anybody you want in there. Like, there is a possibility I could go straight wrestling all the way across here, but... For me, it's I like a little bit more diversity here. You sold out. You sold out. You sold out. Did you see how much money she wanted? She wanted like 60 grand for five weeks. Like, that's as much as I gave Cora Jade in her bonus. Now, 
Like, I was crazy enough to give that 50 grand to Cora Jade. I really shouldn't have, uh, I should have just gave her this. But then I'm worried about losing her eventually, right? Because I will say at the end of September when we're done... When we're all done this uh, season two, we're going to have to be a lot smarter in how we draft. Well, I do want to keep a lot of the people we already had just because of how much we built into them. We are going to have to adjust some of the matchups. Because we are going to need some fresh matchups coming in. And also with the new roster people that I have available that might be able to... Uh, might be able to pick up some extra bodies that we might enjoy here. Because if my math is right, we might be... Uh... As things go on, we might just be able to run right into when 2K25 comes out. I am going to have to do the math and figure things out and... Figure out if we have to do some double taping some days and whatnot. Nice gut wrench there. Oh god. Cora show it off. That I be taking no crap here, set it over the top. Brittany, you really shouldn't get rid of a weapon when you're in the middle of a fight like that. Nice power bomb. Just don't win the match, Brittany. That's all I ask. If it's your last night here, you should be going out on your back. The only difference is I'm not like Tony Khan and try to uh, keep my talent hidden and write them off by the end of the contracts. I make them work for it. As far as I'm concerned, put them in the most dangerous match as possible. Because you're no good to me if you're, uh... If you're not going to be any good to me, you might as well not be any good to anybody else. Nice double team there by Cora and Brittany there. Jesus! I mean, in Stark's case, he wouldn't stop talking about Yeah. Well, they did ask him during the media call. He's like, he's a great talent. And he's under contract. What else would you like me to say about it, guys? Stark's probably around and said, you know, he's probably going to pull a Penta and... Oh, God. Oh, God. Cora, why are you bringing out the ladder? I guess it is an extreme rules match, so it makes sense. And there's our table. Oh, Brittany lands on her feet. You keep swinging, Cora. Eventually, it hit somebody. Business bump pick up. No, like for me, for me, I'm more of the sim guy. Like, uh, I, I know I can't play that well. Eventually, I'm going to pick up the game and do a little bit of play. But 
for me, I'd rather watch this, build this up and get it together because it sort of reminds me of some of the stuff. Like one of the promotions I worked with, I did get a chance to help out a little bit with the booking. Just because they did booking in three month spurts and they wanted to, they wanted to see how the best way to work it backwards from where they were. Like this isn't no 17th level booking, but it still gives you an idea, right? Oh, Cora missed. Here's Ivy's chance. That ladder hasn't been used yet. And Brittany just said, nope, we ain't doing nothing yet. Oh God, that's gotta suck. Quick cover. Ivy's got to get back in there. I'll just not even a one count. Oh, and there's a submission. That's one way to break it up. Oh, God. Here we go. Time for the last ride. And Cora's out. No. Talk about putting yourself over going out the door. And that's why she wanted 60 grand. Brittany, you've been fabulous, but yeah. The rivalry grew. We got to win. A three-star match, that actually will not be bad for us. And, and that's essentially the dead spot anyway. Just a control. Yeah, that. The only problem we've had with the computer control matches. I'll get into it here in a second. Here, Gunter's call. There we go. Gunter, you want you want Shaw so bad? You got to talk the people into the building. I'll give you the match next week. So we're gonna get that match next week. Might do it for the title. We'll see. All right. So this one here. The story behind this match is very simple. Dom hates cops. In any form, any way, any shape, anyhow. So one day he's going to pick up his uh, chicken tendies at the uh, local uh, restaurant in the mall, in the food court. And he sees Clint walking around. And yeah, he doesn't like... Uh, He doesn't like uh, dealing with any kind of cops, so he starts getting into a fight with them. And then, uh, well, Baron Corbin's just looking for somebody to team up with and beat somebody's ass. So, uh, Stax ends up being a champ champ here, so we're going to see if maybe we can switch the titles at this point. Uh, to answer your question, S2S, uh, Channing Stax Lorenzo is actually a wrestler on NXT, the developmental brand. Clint McDougal's a complete creator wrestler. Baron Corbin just got called up to SmackDown after taking some time back at NXT. It's going to take some time. We haven't seen him in a while. And, well, if you don't know who Dominic Mysterio is, you're obviously not watching WWE right now. Anyway, let's get to it here. Yeah, Dominic Mysterio, the mo the se the second most hated man in WWE right now. I say second because he's a bit of a hero to me. After he did Impulsive with Logan Paul, 
and basically called his ass out for not being able to go to Japan on the uh, WWE Tour of Japan recently. The following contest is a Tornado Tag Team Match and is for the SmackDown Logan Paul. Le Logan Paul. Introducing the challengers. First, representing the Judgment Day from San Diego, California, weighing in at 200 pounds. Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Hate it for real, Logan Paul. Getting good crowd heat. Dom is one of the few wrestlers that has ever done this in history. He has... He did a heel turn while being a heel. At SummerSlam, he completed a... He was a heel working with Rhea Ripley as they were going after Liv Morgan. And Dom turned his back on, on Rhea to join Liv. So he went from level 2 heel to level 6 heel. But most of the time you hear a heel turn when you're going from face to heel. He went from heel to bigger heel. So he went from douche to bigger douche. I'm no Logan Paul as a person fan, but God, does he understand WWE's? Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. He, he's a fantastic athlete. But with all due respect, eventually you gotta take into account everything else. As far as I'm concerned, everything that he does outside the ring trumps what he does inside. If it wasn't for the fact that the WWE brand is so big, it sort of bubbles itself away from that crap. Sort of like Pat McAfee when he puts his foot in his mouth every three weeks. So sort of the same boat, right? That Dirty Dom's an amazing chicken shit heel. Yeah, he absolutely is. And it's going to be interesting to see because if you want to talk about point counterpoint, and Zodiac, you were bringing this up during collision tonight. Tomorrow during the the uh, zero hour, the pre-show, they got Stokely Hathaway teaming up with Chris Statlander against Willow Nightingale and uh, Tomohiro Ishii or Big Tom. Uh, Zodiac, you brought up the point that this actually feels like it's going to be an actual mixed tag. Like an actual, you know, men fight the women deal. Do we see the same thing in uh, Germany a week later? Because it is uh, Liv and Dom versus Rhea and... Uh, Damian Priest. But, uh... No, Stax actually got that IC title sort of as, uh... He was the fourth wheel in a match, and we put the title on the line just to boost it up a bit. Didn't think Rollins would lose it, but he did. So now I gotta find a way to get it off. Get it back over to Rollins somehow. You can't do face-face. So what I'm thinking right now, and this is long-term booking right now, the feud we're going to set up is Stax versus MVP. Are you building a star? Uh, we'll see, because it's hard to get cruisers because there are not many giants. Champions, Clint 
McDougal. See, McDougal's the star I'm building right now. Come on now. I have to admit, more of the stars that I'm building are on the women's side than they are on the men's. If there was some way for me to set up an all-women's promotion on here without getting dinged, like you could do ECW that way, but then he'd start they'd start crying because you don't have enough men on your roster. Because literally ECW would be matches, no titles. Then of course I get Jerry Lawler to be the GM. <laughs> All right, so Clint just got the uh, the tornado tag as a brand specialty for him. So that's why I put this match as a tornado tag. I don't expect this to be anything more than like a three-star match. But if anything works here, it's going to build up Clint and Dom. Their singles rivalry, hopefully it pushes them up to another level. As referee Jessica Carr has the titles. We've had little Nate the last few weeks, and now we got Jessica Carr out here. I like the fact that there's a little bit of a difference here. But yeah, Baron's in this match just because he wants a title. He doesn't care how he gets it. Baron Z. He's already in rage mode. That's not good. Sax is a champ champ. He ain't gonna go down that quick. Baron Stax could be a good route. Uh, the weird thing is Baron's considered a bruiser, not a giant. So cla uh, class wise, it, it doesn't work out. The only person I have on the lineup who is 100% matched up with Stax is Gunther. Because right now I only have one giant. One heel giant. After we're done here tonight, maybe we'll have to do some scouting of some rosters here. Because I think we might get a little bit active in the trade market here, depending on what, depending what's offered, depending what they're offering us. Because I'm probably going to need another male giant. Because we got Car both Carmelo and Stax are both considered uh, uh, your cruiserweights for faces. Are we going to get a tile change here? No. Stacks with the breakup. Like, I actually feel that this next set of trades that we do might actually be vital. Depending on what's available and who has what and who's offering what and... Also, I might, I should, if all goes well, I should have a ton load of cash here. Clinton for the cover, no way. Champs retained? No, Baron says no. Measure with that elbow. Oh, Dawes bleeding. We got our first blood tonight. 
And I did make sure the blood marker was still on. No way. <laughs> Baron's still saying no, we ain't going past one here. Dom, you might want to get a little more involved. Oh god, a cravat plex! Snaps the neck over. Oh, off the ropes. Nice backbreaker there. Champs are coming back for a moment. Stacks only stayed down for one. This is hilarious. Dom coming in with a DET. Fisherman Buster into a pin. Oh my god, champs retained. Here are your winners. And still, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Who would have thunk it? Stack stage champ champ. Yeah, we're gonna have to work on that. I can actually realistically I can do it anytime I want. I can fix it. There's a fixed match card I can play to get the title off if I really want to. It just makes the booking a lot more creative. Alright, so a three star. That's not bad. We can we can live with a three star here. Let's see if the Dom and McDougal robbery picked up. No, but we got the tag rivalry, so that works just as well for me. We're going to blow off the singles rivalry, and we're going to get the tag rivalry done, too. So, Charity promo. Didn't lose any popularity, so that's good. We got an extra 3,000 fans. Built him with good 30. He could be a champ, champ, champ. They did that on Raw, and the champs ended up getting injured. So, I don't want to go there. But it is now time for our main event. JC Jade and Scarlett, our WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, taking on Fallon Headley and Billy Slugger. This feud has been going on for a while. Singles, tag, like I know Billy and JC have an absolute, this is one thing I want to find out tonight. This is going to be interesting. So, the tag team rivalry is at a level four. JCJ Billy Slugger's rivalry is at a level three. Now, in this match, do they resolve both rivalries or do they resolve just the one? That's going to be the interesting part I want to find out here. So let's get to it. Once again, everybody, thank you for checking things out here tonight. Just a heads up, on Wednesday, we are going to have a little bit of a new layout here uh, for the for the uh, playthroughs. The only difference is when I'm looking at the at the game. I guess I'm going to be looking a little backwards, apparently. We'll, we'll figure things out. Colors are going to be a little different. Introducing the champions 
first from Tampa, Florida, one half of the women's tag team champions, JC Jane. I just literally noticed that, you know, facing this way is actually the right way on the camera. I always thought it was backwards. But I can fix that up. That's not a big deal. That could be a quick fix for me. Because as I want to do some more PC gaming soon, it'll be more facing this way. So that way the camera, I should have the camera or the me on the other side watching this, right? But yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a different setup here coming up on Wednesday. Just getting rid of the uh, copper and blue overlay. One of the most frustrating things for me watching watching Smack watching Raw these days. Oh wait. Of the women's tag team champions, Scarlett. Is watching a wrestler like Scarlett, who if you didn't know, Scarlett was actually a really good wrestler of the independence. And she played the bombshell gimmick to an absolute T. Like her actual full name is Scarlett Bordeaux when it came to the Indies, right? And she she knew how to play the gimmick and she knew how to wrestle really well, but she hasn't got that opportunity anywhere here. In many ways, it's sort of like Taya at AEW. Like, don't get me wrong, Taya gets the odd match here, but which by default everybody gets one mat couple matches. But the fact that Scarlett hasn't had the ability to get in there and wrestle a little bit more, like... You want to talk about an unholy union with uh, Alba Fire and uh, Isla Dawn? Put Scarlett in there, the voodoo child. And this is before Fallon turned heel, right? This is definitely something I haven't done yet that I really need to uh, start working on. Is let's let's do some turns. We haven't done a turn in a while. But the only thing that sucks here is you can't do a turn in the middle of a match. You have to do a turn in a promo. I think we might have to. I just thought about this. The Trent Shaw Guthrie match. No wonder it didn't turn out well if there's two heels, right? Billy Slugger. Yeah, Billy is actually one of our upstarts that we've been using for a while here. We used her in season one. She did well. Unfortunately, she asked for too much, so we had to let her go. And now we brought Bailey back. All right, so once again, we do have a tag team cage match, and I do believe for this one, you both members have to leave the cage to win. I can't remember the exact rules for tag team cages. I think it's either one pinfall or both members leave the cage. Well, Fallon just shot herself out of a cannon. Yeah, if everything could go well, I 
The last two rivalries I want for Becky Lynch are involving both the heels in this matchup right now. Scarlett and JC. Because I could actually turn Becky's class if I really need to. Oh, Fallon's out. Oh my god, Billy's going too? Are we gonna have new champs and like... JC, get over there! As much as I wouldn't mind a title switch... Oh my god! Oh, Fallon didn't help her partner. Both ladies just teetering there. That's not good. And Billy eats some steel. Chase through that nice little German suplex there. Yeah, I think it's both people have to escape. So yeah, it makes sense here how things go. A little bit of soul food there. Scarlet tried her way out, but Billy's like... No. Yeah, I got a feeling this one's going to last a while. There's so many good things about this match built up. Between the rivalries. Oh, look at that. Oh, I thought she was going to do the poison rider. Billy's like, don't even bother starting to try. Oh, God. Scarlet's had enough. Oh, nice reversal. Short clothesline. Blockbuster by Henley. Starks. Or Slugger, sorry. She's real starting to pose down a little bit. Oh, God. All right, Jade trying to get out. Slugger catching Scarlet. Might not have been the best move. Oh, never mind. Champ's got him. This is actually really entertaining for the fact that they're... Oh! Scarlet just came down with a double axe. Nice neck breaker. So story-wise, Billy gets out. Fallon's got to go it alone with the champs. No, you haven't got her. Uh-oh. JC, you guessed wrong. JC, you guessed wrong. Get over there. Oh my God, she's too late. And Fallon Headley and Billy Slugger are going to be our new... Women's Tag Team Champions. And new. And the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. The team of Fallon Henry and Billy Slugger. 
see if I was gonna if I was gonna get a uh, permanent card like take a part-time wrestler and move her into full-time I'd have to use Billy at this at this point I'm almost scared to see what Billy's contract's gonna be coming up classic there we go four and a half rivalry complete that's awesome that is an awesome way to finish this pay-per-view four and a half rivalry complete so we started with a four and a half we ended with a four and a half and then we got a whole bunch of ew, in the middle it could be worse anyway time for the report cards Smackdown, amazing booking. I think it's a, one of the first times we've gotten amazing booking. So no rivalry there. Or sorry, rivalry's done there. We got a level three rivalry there. We got a level two there. We got the tag rivalry level one. This rivalry's all done. I want to see why this ended up being a two-star match. They called it performance? And it was a match specialty, so I don't know what the big deal is. Match type, not the best for those two. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, so that's why we didn't get more than a two-star off of that is because the performance, the match type, and the specialties. So you got to be a little more pickier on what specialty used for what point. Fair enough. And then this one here, three-star performance was horrible. Rivalry was horrible because we added Brittany in there. It's fine. Lesson learned. Everything else worked great. So in other words, keep Ivy and Cora going at it with each other, and they're good. This one here for three. Performance was crap. Tag chemistry, nobody had any, which is always great. And yeah, for this one here, just everything. The performance scores are always going to be low. Until they actually work a lot together, right? So let's take a look at what everybody else got. Amazing bookie here on Raw as well. Level one. Level one. Level four. Level three. So no real rivalry solved. And so basically the PLE wasn't used as a PLE. Let's go here. Booker T and Cross getting up to a three. Nothing rivalry. Level three. And injuries. Four weeks and four weeks. So basically Big E and Dolan are gone for a month. If I could get those guys on the cheap. If I could get Gigi on the cheap. We might have toxic attraction back here yet. If I get on the cheap, I have health cards to bring them back sooner. So that's not a big deal. The hell is out for two weeks. Robbery complete one star. Robbery complete. See, he did a little bit more. Makes sense. McLeod Garcia still level four, level three, level two. All right. Now the most important part. Final results. EC okay, so this goes in reverse order. 140,000 fans. $103,000 cash. So he made some bank tonight. So 113 rating for WCW, 120,000 fans. And 300, ooh, everybody's making money. Carter Buck worked really well as a team, great. 3492 and 353, okay. Raw got a 115. So 123, but they have no money. They literally have no money. I crippled them so damn bad last week. That they're still fighting to get back from there. So 3633 three, and 215. We got a 116, so that's pretty good. 
and we're almost at three hundred thousand dollars so that's actually pretty good as, as well all right let's see what kind of power cards we get out of this no power cards because i didn't play the uh I did do a run-in on Gunther this week, or a run-in on Rollins, sorry. So we are officially first in terms of Hall of Fame trophies. We are currently second in terms of fans. We're still about 50,000 behind, uh, behind Raw. So we are still going to have to do some work on that. They're probably going to get their third uh, Hall of Fame trophy here sooner than later, which means we're going to drop down to second. In terms of what we're doing here going along, I wouldn't feel too bad about going second after the second season because the, the number of uh, whatever spot you are is the extra number of people you're allowed to keep in before we go back into the draft. Like you're allowed to have certain keepers, First place gets three keepers, second place gets four, third place gets five, fourth place gets six, if they want to use them. The more keepers I could get, the better. Because there's a few wrestlers I want to keep here going forward. So, But as per tradition here, and as, uh, as the game will not save at this point, we have to advance to the beginning of our next week. So let's go find out what other screwy things we're going to have to deal with coming up on our next episode here. Oh, that's right. We got the trades to worry about. Oh, so there, we actually get to offer the trade first. Nobody's offering a trade. Uh, trade out available for Braun. Oops. Bailey's out for three weeks. Is there anybody I could really look at getting rid of here? You know what? I don't think there's anybody I could really look at saying I want to get rid of at this point. Stamina's a little low at a few guys, but that's minor for me. We're going to work on getting Scarlet and... Uh, No, I think we're good. Oh, hold on here, chat. We got a lovely friend here who, once again, we've been getting a lot of bots tonight. I'm surprised. So we are looking for some more heals. I think we're going to do it through the free agent market because nobody else wants to talk to us. So let's, oh, that's right, because we were, all right, let's see what we can do here. Oh, so they get to offer, all right. Ah. So they want Fallon now that we have, and Seth. Zodiac, maybe it's just me, but I don't want to lose my champs that I've already got. Savage is a nice pickup, but he's on a temporary contract, so I don't even know if I want him. Can't lose a champ. Nope. I love that graphic. I really do. See what ECW's got to say. Oh. Oh, hello, this. Hear me out, chat. This one actually looks a little bit more interesting. Like Valhalla, I could clean that up in a hurry here if I need to. But having a fresh Blair versus an MVP who just won his rivalry... 
Valhalla actually hates uh hates Heyman, so and those are a couple cheap con oh Valhalla only has a week left in her contract. So 60, 40, 102. So basically we're getting, let me just check this here. Yeah, how many weeks is that? Basically, I think I'm getting an expiring contract there. But having Blair there. Blair there and take out MVP? Let's take a look at what we got here. In terms of heels. Okay, we got... We got Baron. We got Dom. And the 46k, yeah, that'll help too. So we can pick up somebody if we want to. Like right now, in terms of heels, all we have is Gunther, Baron, Dom. If we lose MVP, we're down to like. Yeah, we can always pick someone up. That. Yeah, I think we'll do it. He might have fleeced me a little bit, but I can live with that. San Jose. All right, what does Valhalla want for a contract? Five weeks, 80K. Here, here we go. That's basically half of what... You know what? I want to take some time to I want to take some time to figure this out. I want to leave that there. You know what? She's very happy right now. Her stamina's low. We won't defend the tag titles. We'll let them get their tag title match. Their rematch. Actually, if she's really happy, maybe I'll let her say, sorry, we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to give you something better. Yeah, I think we're just going to take the minor loss here. Okay, so she's just straight face now. He wants me to... So he wants me to match in his corner with Tread Shaw, which is going to piss off him. I'm going to stay out of it. I know it's going to lose some morale here, but I can build that back up. Small decrease. He's still smiling. All right, here we go. So... It'll get that rock... Yeah, but here's the thing. If I get that rivalry to level four, I'll get that rivalry to level four for breathing anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, which one do I do for a shakeup here? Because I got a lot of good ones here. All active rivalries go to level four. That I, I Most of mine are already level four already, so I don't need to worry about that. 
Do I take the one with injury or do I take the PR training? I think the PR training probably is the better one here because I could actually judge how much uh, my guys go down in terms of uh, stamina for those matches. Because I haven't had an injury yet and I I'm sure I could live with that, so. Thinking, yeah, probably the, like, Oh, I got five weeks left. Oh, I got I got work with her. That's not going to be a problem. All right. Well, I think I might be working on a few things here, but yeah, we got a lot of females here we could use for this. Let's just. I think I'm going to use this one with. Uh, Uh, do I want to use th this one legit bothers me about which one to use because I don't think I'm going to be using that many female promo skills you know what stamina is getting to be a bit of an issue here so scared me a little bit but we're going to use it be sure that bear pro ha <laughs> for a two bit arena okay So Ava's contract runs out. Billy's contract runs out the same week. So I'm guessing that... I think for this week... All right, so we gave her two weeks of rest. So Valhalla we have to the PLE, so... We'll, we'll work on her getting her involved here. We're going to have to pick up some other people. We are going to get some more show logistics here because we have two available. Either we can do the gorilla or the commercial ads. What power cards are available as well? We don't have held to sell yet. Ooh. I don't think we have casket either, so... So those aren't going to be much of an issue here. We're going to get our increase in uh, whether it's the stage crew or commercial ads. Which will either open up a no holds barred match or a special guest referee match. We'll, we'll have to figure that out on Wednesday here. So, But yeah, we are in terms of challenges right now. We're on track to spend enough money on the shows. We're at 836 out of 100,000 with 10 shows to go. That's not going to be a big deal to get over a million there. So we're going to get another season challenge there. Yeah, we're, we're cruising right along here in terms of getting everything put together here, but... I think that's going to wrap it up here for tonight. I want to thank everybody for popping in here today. Always appreciate having you here. Uh, we are going to be back tomorrow once again with uh, our all... Or sorry. Where is my brain here? For those on Twitch, hang around. I'm just doing a wrap up here on YouTube. We're going to, we're going to wrap this up and then I'll send you guys off on a nice little raid to a friend of ours. But for those on uh, YouTube, thank you for stopping by here. We do record these every Wednesday and Saturday after AEW Dynamite and AEW Collision here on twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. Always appreciate having you here. The, the replays are available every Tuesday and Friday over on the Backbreaker Gaming YouTube channel. But with that being said, thank you for being here. Hit that like, subscribe. You know the jazz. You hear way too many times on these other channels. But no matter what, Thank you for being here. I appreciate you being here. And always remember, be part of the solution. Don't be part of the problem. And we'll see you all here next time on the Mike Draft Twitch channel and the Backbreaker Gaming YouTube channel. Take care, everybody.